right, we're not off to a brilliant start, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I've had quite a few days in a row now where I haven't slept particularly well. Partly because of excitement, I'll be honest, and other just, I don't know, I just haven't. And uh, it's all starting to get to me and I'm getting a little bit rough. So I'm gonna try and make this review as best as I can. Good evening from the... Oh, listen to that trend seven hundred. Good evening <laughs> from, uh, I guess you could say, the world famous uh, in and out at uh, LAX, Los Angeles. Uh, I've been spending the last... Yeah, you can't really see it where I am. But uh, I've been spending the last couple of hours here uh, just making the most of LAX before we head back, uh, back home to Orlando. And uh, we're going to be flying on United again. Uh, we've already covered United. Uh, however, this is going to be quite a special flight as it is supposedly, like last time, supposedly, uh, meant to be operated by a 737 MAX. Uh, November 37532, something like that. Um, yeah, and uh, we're going to be flying that back to Orlando. Uh, flight time is approximately 4 hours and 48 minutes, so it's going to be a fairly long one. Uh, but it's my first proper red eye. Um, so it's going to be quite interesting this. We landed to Orlando at 7 a.m. Uh, the, the following day. And here is the United 737 MAX. Go through security, 10 minutes later, I'm airside. Top marks for LAX on that front. And as we can see here, terminal looks all right. So one thing that we could obviously do in all these other airports that you've seen here is you can kind of walk from pier to pier. However, sadly, one thing about LAX is each pier is actually its own terminal. So there's nine terminals here at uh, LAX. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the Tom Bradley International Terminal. Um, as they're separate terminals, it means that once you're airside in that terminal, you're stuck in that terminal. You can't, you can't move around. And I'm just having a look around. And I'll be honest, it seems like just down there and up there, which isn't that long, seems about it. So I'm just having a look to actually see if that is it or if I've missed something. Right, so it turns out down here, there's actually two piers. There's a, yeah, there's two piers here, so it's just the one. So there is more than I initially thought. As usual with Americans, they're excellent at separating boarding groups, so the boarding process was overall really painless. And welcome on board seat 28 Alpha on this 737 MAX. My first ever one. We are doing our first 737 MAX trip everyone and I cannot wait. Let's have a look at the seat, shall we? Because this differs quite a lot to that 737-900 ER that flew us out here. On the face of the seat, it looks exactly the same, pretty much. We've got our four-way hammock-style adjustable headrest, which is 
all well and good. We've got adjustable armrests, a lovely comfortable seat belt, but the real changes are on the seat back. As we can see here, we have a nice big in-flight entertainment system, which is pretty nice for a narrow body aeroplane. We have our tray table, which is slightly smaller than that was uh, than the one that was on that 737-900. Uh, the whole seat back is a different design. It's not the same. Um, it's not the same design that we found on those BA aeroplanes. And the uh, legroom is pretty decent considering the size of aeroplane this is. All the literature is down in the bottom area. That we have no literature in the top area of the seat anymore. And that's simply because that top area is now occupied by the screen. So legroom is could possibly start to get quite cramped, uh, but by the looks of it, everything is all very thin in there, so it doesn't seem to compromise it too much. We have USB power, we have a headphone jack, and there's also a, a universal power cable down there, so your devices can stay charged during the entire flight. And if you have a look out the wing, I'm sure you'll agree, we've absolutely aced it. And look at that window alignment. I'm happy. I forgot to mention one, arguably one of the most important things. We've been given blankets. As this is a night flight and we're probably going to be sleeping, which, including me, which I never thought I'd ever do on an airplane, especially on a 737 Max. We have blankets so we can cuddle up. So, well, let's head out of LA. Should be a nice view, hopefully. Given the nature of the flight, most of the passengers really wanted to sleep, so we didn't really see much of the cabin crew. Shortly after departure, they did serve us some lovely Biscoff. Ugh, oh, I wish these UK and European airlines would serve them. These were all served on some lovely Greta Thunberg approved napkins. United is trying really hard to reduce their carbon footprint. The mood lighting in the 737 cabin, thanks to Boeing's sky interior, is really nice. The overhead panels are nice, new, modern, and do have overhead air vents, which is always nice to see. As you can see, we've got, it's pretty small, but it's relatively well kept. It's not actually that bad. Yeah, yes, yeah, not. The real changes though are in the new in-flight entertainment. United launched a new project recently called the United Next Scheme, which is basically their mission to install in-flight entertainment to the entire narrow body fleet, excluding United Express by 2025. Apparently the rollout has been a bit slow, but it has definitely been happening. And these aircraft were delivered with the screens new from the factory. The screens are really high resolution, they're extremely responsive and have plenty of content. United have also innovated a few new features, Ooh, including being able to Bluetooth your AirPods to the screen and listen to air traffic control, which I thought was really, really cool. Sadly, the air traffic control system wasn't really working when I tried to use it, so I'm not sure if it works. So let me know, have you tried it before?
United also have Wi-Fi fitted to the vast majority of their aircraft, and oh my god, it's one of the fastest Wi-Fis I've ever experienced in the air. I was watching 1440p YouTube, and the best bit? I'm a T-Mobile customer, so it was free. If you're not a T-Mobile customer, you can pay, it's about $8, so really reasonable for the whole flight. So these are the new flagship aircraft in the United Narrowbody fleet and I really think United has done an absolutely excellent job. Where they can almost spend, I guess, and innovate, they've done exactly that. Re editing this now pretty long after the actual flight, it's given me quite a lot of time to reflect on how the Americans do things compared to the Europeans and I'm really enjoying the way the Americans are going about things. United and Delta, as I've mentioned before, have kind of adopted a new business model where they want to kind of get rid of this stigma that all American carriers are a bit rubbish and they've basically upped their ticket prices but made themselves as, as good as possible, in particular from a hard product perspective. All these carriers in Europe, they're not implementing IFE screens, they're not giving out free Wi-Fi, they're not really going all out on the mood lighting in some cases either. United, Delta, they all are. Sadly, there are a few things where I do think they are still slacking. I think there's a few elements of the onboard service that are slightly lacklustre compared to Europe, and even small things like domestic first tickets don't give you lounge access unless you hold a certain status with the airline. This cabin is mega, mega comfortable. I had never slept on an aeroplane until this flight. Granted, I was shattered, however the seat itself was super comfortable and the 737 MAX as an aircraft is so smooth and quiet a ride. I absolutely loved it. It's quite rare that I book an airline again quite short after because I love it so much. However, I've done exactly that here with United where coming up, on one of my videos still to edit if it hasn't been uploaded already, I doubt it has, I've actually decided to fly some of United's oldest aircraft featuring the 757-200 so I can't wait to show you what that's like. So far I've had absolutely nothing bad to say about United. The cabin crew on this flight was so friendly and so accommodating and did everything really happily with a smile. I really felt like the United crew really enjoyed their job. So if anyone is watching from United 1730, thank you so much for such a lovely flight. Thank you so much for choosing to watch this video. Apologies for the slight lack of uploads lately. Life has been very busy, but a massive thank you for sticking around and taking the time to watch this. If you did enjoy it, feel free to give it a like. Let me know what you think of United below in the comments. And if you are new, feel free to subscribe for many more trip reports to come. Until next time, have a good one.